Stone, even though the thing says it's just down, I think there are more lessons on in way. In way. <laughs> supposed to know mm. you try this the world is entering into an economic recession yes. market volatility yes. is at an all-time high mm. and, and make money in YouTube How was your day? What did you do today? Good. Today I want to talk about Ingve Malmsteen, a guy who needs absolutely no intention. I want to say that I was around 16 years old. I was like, 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 Stick around, check this video which, which out, and if you want to learn any of them, then you can follow the, the tabs on screen. The, the a couple of quick things to keep in mind when playing in bass stuff or playing in his style is that he used a Fender Stratocaster, which we used today. He used a specific board, which means the wood in between the frets is curved, which really allows him to get. Okay, so that was lick number one, it's in the key of 
C minor. And it's a repeating lick, and the scale used rather than normal C minor is C harmonic minor, which is basically just the same as a normal minor scale, but the seventh note of the scale is raised. So essentially it's just the normal natural minor scale with a major seventh note. Yeah, sorry, so a normal sorry. C minor scale would sound like this. Whereas a C harmonic minor scale with the raised seventh note, which would make it sound like this. And those are all the notes that I'm using in this lick, although I'm starting up here and basically you, you, you playing the same thing going down an octave each time. So if I play that lick slowly, the these are the notes shape. that we have. The shape you thought you could idea is to get used to the shape and use alt I'll play that lick slowly these are the notes that we have the shape and use alternate picking where you're picking up and down between every okay. single note obviously just then like, I played like, it all with down picks just to show you it's slow but I can play it slow again and this time around alternate to, pick every single note Jenna, you know how to read tabs, right? Um, maybe, maybe we should do one that again and then I'll, I'll let you take home some books and then you can actually try to figure out things yourself okay can, okay can, can you um, see for example right okay, let, let, let me give you a real quick okay can you see the pointer or not is there a pointer oh there's no pointer you cannot see the pointer okay okay uh, never mind okay, okay. Let, let me move uh, back. 
okay let you see ya uh. okay do you know okay if you to look at the number 16 the the first number that you see at the far left corner 16 15 13 that is the number of the frets okay so uh, the fret number 16 fret number 15 fret number 13 the lines that you see are the strings so the string that's on top is the thinnest string with the high e and the one all the way at the bottom is the low e so so that's how you actually uh, read that so so if i were to do it like this so now i'm playing 16 15 13 so 16 will be here 13 that then you just read it like that uh, but then um, um, for for playing solos but for chords it doesn't really tell you which finger to go where uh, as in like like chords like how you hold chords like maybe your pinky should be on that string or so that sort of takes a bit of figuring out yourself so then if you can see that uh, the, the, the numbers that uh, yeah so it's actually quite straightforward so as I said, the 16 where the first uh, number you see, that's on the high E, that's the thinnest string. So the one all the way to the bottom is, is uh, the line, is, uh, is it's for the thickest string, which is the E, thick E, the, the high E and the low E. Quite simple, right? <laughs> Sorry about the 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 lag. Uh, we're gonna do something about it. I think it's stupid. The router is a, a bit far away from the computer, so that's why. So most probably when I get this fixed, it'll be a lot faster. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
so let's move on to the next leg practice it with a metronome, start slow and build it up in tempo. Lick number two is a really cool one and I first heard this lick in an Yngwie Malmsteen song called Vengeance and it, it's a four note repeating pattern. Every first note changes and the second, third and fourth note are a repeating pattern. I'll play it slowly first and then I'll talk through what that means. So here it is slowly. Okay. So if you can see it starts with 12, 12 the, the thinner string or the, the high E string. So here's the first four notes. 
like this. The bar. Again, that's. Here's the third one. Come on. <laughs> something that Ingve does quite a lot which is a diminished sweet picked arpeggio and for this one I'm one two three you play the exact same pattern again and when you've done that there you slide it up again three frets three. play it again there one, two, three. Play it again. and I just put a little bend on the end of it so slow it's more three So the first part is just a pull off, and then one again, but this time you're going immediately to the next position. Okay, lick number four, again, it's kind of similar to lick number two, it's another repeating part like this.
even though the frets are quite small up here because my second and third finger are right next to each other on these two frets. Two is something well, inspired deep. by one of Ingve's songs called Baroque and Roll. And slowly it sounds like this. Play this one I did something that Ingve does quite a lot where rather than just but I prefer to do it this way take it slow load it up in speed but number five is something inspired by one of Ingve's songs called Baroque and Roll and slowly it sounds like this
this half step bend really high bend. Okay, 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 okay. Sounds good. Good, 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 good. Uh, let me see. Um, which is something that Ingve does all the time. So there you go, there's five Ingve Malmsteen licks that I remember learning, which really transformed my playing, stopped me being just pentatonic, really helped me develop a bit more, develop my speed, develop my picking, everything like that, helped me travel across the fretboard quite a bit. And I think they sound great, and hopefully you guys like them as well. If you did like this video, then please let me know, leave a like, leave a comment. And if you haven't already, then please don't forget to subscribe. So if you did enjoy this video, then please click up here to see another one over here to subscribe to my channel, and hopefully I will see you in my next video. Thanks for watching. Ah, this is five easy licks. Today it's part four of how to sound like Ingve Malmsteen, yes. and I have five easy ish licks for you. Ish. That so, another video with me Elmo J. Karyalan and it's good to have you along you can call me this guy if my this name guy. is tricky to pronounce or if you just prefer today is mm. part four in a series of how to sound like Ingve Malmsteen oh. and uh, today I'm doing five easy licks easy ish licks I've actually found easy one ish. really easy one uh, I'm so proud I'm of myself it's really difficult to find anything by Ingve that's easy, but uh, yeah, the thing about these is that you do most of these and you will sound like Ingve. Hangar 18, Area 51, which is, if you don't remember that song, it's this one. At one point in the solo, when it moderates, it does this. This is the lick. <laughs> he does it slightly better than I do. That's 21. <laughs> From the 9th fret to the 21st fret on your regular strat. Now there's nothing to say which key that is or anything. But why is that? Why do I have that here? Yeah, what? <laughs> because if you take away the vibrato and do that exact same lick, sounds like it's just it's just pointless. What's the point of that? With vibrato. Instantly, it's totally different. So that's an easy lick. Uh, it's good for your vibrato, so you can actually hone in on that a bit if you're playing Ingve stuff. But it's also good uh, so that you get more comfortable with longer jumps on the neck. So you can do that in, let's say, A minor. So now, th at this point, <laughs> it, it's not easy anymore. But it's easy in the context of being very mouthy, so to say. Uh, and of course, you can do these solely, so they become slightly easier. This is very good for learning scales, um, because learning scales can be a bit repetitive, a bit boring. Uh, you can do these uh, different ways, but this is uh, Phrygian dominant starting on 
the 12th fret E string. No tab for this because I think you should uh, kind of practice your ears by transcribing okay. stuff. Plus you have the video and you can see what I'm doing. And uh, I'll do it slow, I'll do it quicker first and then slow.
So that's an A minor changing to a B minor uh, at the end. But otherwise an A minor. The end. Minor changing to... So slowly. So that's an A minor changing to a harmonic minor uh, at the end. But otherwise, an A minor. And uh, that's extremely useful because as guitar players when we learn our scales and modes and all that we tend to uh, stick to our box shapes and that's a very good way to be playing your scales or playing your or thinking about your scales you need to develop this type of thinking of course but also this type of thinking and this um, lick this idea you can do that in all sorts of keys that was a minor i could do this in e minor and it becomes more difficult if you start jumping back and forth but you do it kind of slowly i'll do the original one The next one, uh, slightly less to do with scales now, but this is very good for your pinky, the weakest of our fingers. So you probably know that type of idea, it's very classical. Um, he does it uh, everywhere, basically. He has a whole song where one of the themes is... Uh, you can find it in the rock and roll. can you make if you sell this product online? If you drive? I'm not gonna make anything, bro. Or you take a... And, uh, yeah, so we have frets are 10 on B string, 12, 10, uh, 8, and 7 on B string if we do this. So it forces you to work on that weak finger, that pinky, Just these three, uh, you're slightly more limited than if you use this as well. So uh, that's very important if you use that. Or even 
Brauchst du ihn? So, that was lick number four. Now, lick number five. If you play this, everyone's gonna go. Ingle Malmsteen. Yes, it's. Arpeggio thing has huge jumps up and down. So, the diminished thing is easier, it's easier than it's just one form that you Slowly, so you can look at the hand. So if you want to practice your sweeping, this is quite a good place to start.
Join me on Patreon because you get access to my guitar academy, which has lessons on scales and bends and vibrato and sweeping and all sorts of picking economy, picking and all that stuff and the mental side of playing. Recording and mental side of things. Thank you very much. Let me try to learn. Excuse me, vacuum track. Let's try, let's try, let's try. It's an A, let's do this. I'm gonna show you this looks metal with smooth and hands in one one. It's played smooth, brah. Go You've it. got the idea. Who's Go Daddy has the domain.
you very much. Take care. Hasta la vista.